Good morning, one year no beer, how are you? Uh, I was just, I've had a line this morning, I usually get up at 5am all through the week and then I set my alarm for half seven and I slept right to my alarm so that was great and I woke up to Andy running about in a field. <laughs> so he's inspired me, to, I don't normally run because my back's a bit dodgy so I stick to my walking but I've started doing a couple of park runs and I love this, it's misty wet today so I'm going to go and do what Andy's been doing, I'm going to go and run in a field. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I just wanted to, <clears throat> tomorrow... Tomorrow is day 365 for me, but I don't feel I've done 365 until Tuesday. I just thought I'd point that out. So tomorrow, I thought I might post. Now, a lot of you have seen it, but a lot of new you people won't have seen it. I thought I might post my very ever first video I did on this page. And it was the night when I was drinking before I started. And it was me drinking my last glass of wine. And I remember, it, and I can't believe tomorrow, that will be a year ago... And I can't believe the difference. And that video was just awful. And that's how I used to feel all the time. And it's, I was so ashamed of it. And I decided to post it on here. I didn't know I was going to start doing video diaries every day. At the time when I posted it, it's just sort of morphed into it. Because I know I didn't want to do it on my own page. But I also made the decision to post that video on my own page as well. And... I'm really glad I did because I was so embarrassed about it and the shame of it. And that stopped me many a time when I've thought, oh, I want to drink. So I thought, I just don't want to be that lady anymore, that person. It was just, it's just awful. Anyway, it's only short, so I'll post it tomorrow. So um, I've forgotten what I was going to talk about. So I'm fiddling with some little houses that I got for Christmas. Oh, little, tiny little houses. Ooh. Three little wooden ones. But... Um, what was I going to speak about? I can't remember. Oh, yes. Um, just what other people think. What do other people think of what you're doing and how you let it affect you? Now, I have always feel, although it's not easy to live by, what other people think of you is none of your business. You can't change what other people think. All you can change is how you react to it. And sometimes that's easier said than done. Now, over the years, some of you may remember my carpool rants. <laughs> done a few of them where I've been in the car and it's usually always been after because I teach spinning at my local gym and it's always been after a spinning class and one particular woman in it it was a bit of an arsehole quite frankly <laughs> and she was one of these and I always used to get on all right with her and I do well I don't really because she, she's done made in but uh, she was just started being quite evil start you know the grief she used to give me when she knew I'd stopped drinking and after uh after I'd done my month oh Sally how's you are you still not drinking I said no and she goes oh it's ridiculous and she'd known she'd known because I've known from the gym a long time I don't know her well but I've just known from the gym and she's known I've had depression because I was off work for about four months with it uh this is going back a good couple of years ago and um she pulled me over after a class says, look, Sally, she goes, you need to be careful, she says, because you're taking away all the happiness out of your life. Your depression will just come back. Oh, my God, I was livid. I was livid. And uh, literally a few months later, uh, somebody was sat next to her on a bike and said, a bloomin' egg, Sally, you're looking trim. I said, oh, it's another side effect of being alcohol-free. She goes, oh, my God. You know, she goes, but it's boring, though, isn't it? It's boring. No, it isn't, actually, Val. It's not boring at all, you know, so... Uh, it's just different and it is and that just leads me on that it is different you know and and it's it's odd and now she doesn't say anything because she knows I'm in it for the long haul although I think she's dying to see what I'm going to do after the year and I still don't know but um it is odd what other people think and the best advice I can give is when people are giving you grief people close to you people you don't really know I've never been one for this stealth drinking and there's no right or wrong, but I've never wanted to disguise the fact that I'm not drinking. And that's what I've loved again, being part of One Year No Beer, because I just say I'm doing a challenge and people respect it. You know, they don't, most of them, they don't question it. And, um, you know, so I've quite happily, you know, why aren't you drinking? Oh, I'm doing a year's challenge. Br oh, you're brilliant. Oh, good. You know, and that tends to be, oh, I couldn't do that. And I love that feeling when somebody says, I couldn't do that, because that used to be what I thought. Literally, oh, God, literally, I was on a bottle and a half, two bottles of Prosecco, five nights a week, and I used to look at people who didn't drink 
and think I could never do that. I'd never want to do that. And look at me now. And you so can. Anybody, anybody, anybody can do it. And it's what's lovely is when people do give you a hard time, the best advice can give. Have you ever seen Madagascar? Smile and wave. Just smile and wave. And just let your experience do the talking and the inspiring because it does inspire. Um, and you'll be amazed. And that's what starts to feel lovely because if you're doing it, you might not even be aware yet, but you will be inspiring people to try it, to even think about it, to question their drinking habits. Even if you're on day five, you will be inspiring people. You might not feel like you are because you're probably not even inspiring yourself yet because you'll be in that, oh God, this is hard. You might not be, you might be finding it a breeze. Everybody's different. But just can, the more you continue, the more you'll inspire. And it depends what, you know, who, you, who you're with and what you do, I suppose, as to and how much people know you or... But it really does. I remember there was a lady once and I think it was the most proud I've been of inspiring people because so many people have stopped drinking because I've stopped drinking and I'm really genuinely proud of that. You know, they've jo a lot have joined One Year No Beer, a lot are in the paid members group. Hello! <laughs> and I've just loved it when I see the names keep popping up. And people who I hadn't even realised I've inspired, I've bumped into them in the street and they say, oh, Sally, you know, I just can't believe what you've done and I've done it. I'm doing dry January, even if it's inspiring to do dry January, which is brilliant. And it is such a lovely feeling. I remember there was this one lady um, on uh, my page called, um, well, you don't need to know what she was called. And she drank like I did and she thought, right, I'm going to try this. And she did. 30 days you know she just did 30 days over the summer it was uh, towards the end of the summer and she really didn't think she'd be able to do it and she documented it so everybody could see what she was doing and uh, a bit like I did I suppose on one year no beer and it was fascinating to watch from my point of view to watch somebody else you know who I'd been responsible for for inspiring doing it and it was just tremendous it was such a lovely feeling and do you know what there was one post that she put on she used to, didn't do videos she did written posts and they're lovely sometime and i can't do written posts they go on far too long as you can imagine but if i can just quickly tell you know it's been seven and a half minutes but you know some of these could be 20 minutes you know and i remember this post she'd put on one morning she'd said do you know what? I'm really starting to see the benefits of this alcohol free. And she goes, and I know what Sally says. It's about because my biggest benefit is being present, present with the family, present with the children. And she says, I used to get her children a lot younger. You know, they were like uh, seven and 11, I think. And she said she used to want to get them to bed at night. And then she couldn't wait to get downstairs and just crack open the wine. And oh, that feeling. And she says the biggest thing she noticed when she didn't drink for 30 days was that desire stopped because she knew she wasn't doing it. She knew she was going to do the 30 days. And she'd always be a bit rough in the mornings, not hungover because she was used to drinking, but just not on her A game and a bit irritable with the children. But certainly putting them to bed, she just wanted them to go to bed. I mean, I could relate to that. I used to send mine used to go to bed. I go, I'll be up in a minute. You know, Nancy was about 12. I'll be up in a minute and I never went up. And then when I went up at half 11, half cut, she'd be fast asleep in bed with her eye mask on. And I'd not even said goodnight to her. I mean, that's just shit. And all because I was having a drink and that was more important to me. And it gives me huge shame now, but pride that I'm not doing it. Anyway, I'm sidetracking myself. So get back to this lady. And she made me cry because this post I woke up to, she said... So anyway, last night, she goes, I put the children to bed, the girls, two girls they were, and she says, and I got into the eldest one's bed and I'd read her a story and we started getting the covers and we're doing this with the covers, going up and down, up and down, making great big wins. And with, we were both laughing. So the lady was laughing and the daughter was laughing and they were both giggling, doing it. Woo, you know, like this. I know it sounds daft. And anyway, she kissed her goodnight. And as this the lady went downstairs, she says her heart just was full of gratitude. And she said she was smiling all the way down the stairs with the realisation that that would never have happened if she'd have been drinking and it's little moments like that that you get so many of that you aren't even aware that you're missing when you're drinking. And I cannot tell, and I've got hundreds I could tell you about. I really could, you know, so many moments that I've experienced like that that I would not have had had I been drinking. And so when I'm 
on the morning of a weekend or the morning of a Saturday or Sunday tends to be the hardest when I just think, what should I do? And sometimes I feel my life's a bit more... Everybody goes, oh, it's brilliant. But sometimes I do feel my life's just not quite as exciting because I'm not drinking. But give me those moments any day because I've had loads of them. And it's that that I think you have to be grateful for and it's that that you strive for and that is worth any any moment of drinking that you're not going to remember anyway. So when that lady used to say to me in spinning, oh, it's boring. Yeah, but I'm making moments. I'm making moments that I will remember forever. So just when you're struggling, that is going to come to you. You are, and, but you've got to, I do believe in gratitude. I've got to do a whole other video on that and how you've got to be open for it. So I know it's a bit woo-woo and some of you probably don't like it, but it makes a, a huge difference. All right then, have a wonderful day. And I know it's like sort of three, six, five tomorrow, but I'm calling it Tuesday. But I'll post that video tomorrow. Or right, 11, 11, 11. Ooh, that does mean something. Cheerio. Bye.